um, we uh, started this uh, the series called Providing Great Customer Service. So again, if you missed it, uh, you can go to uh, your dashboard. No, don't go to your dashboard. Go to YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. Uh, look up West USA Realty, and we have a playlist of all of our podcasts. So definitely want to check that out. I think you were going to say something before I jumped into this. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> So, but if we wanted to talk more about in, uh, inflation numbers hey, and, and Fed rates, uh, no, you got your covered. I think it was the customer service perspective, which was just in, in reality, you know, it's kind of part of that Michael Mayer book that we always talk about, Seven Levels of Communication. What? But, I've never heard you talk about that yeah, before. No, I know. I know. I never <laughs> um, but no, actually, it, it is, it's sad that, that we have to say that when we see good customer service, it's not the norm. It's what's unusual. Yeah, it is. But I think at this point, knowing that it's easier than it ever has been to stand out above the crowd because oh, it doesn't point. take a lot at this moment in 2023 to be that good customer service person that stands out in your brain after you're done working with an individual. Damn, Nick, that was priceless. All right, so first, you, yeah, you're, that's that so Oh, hey, you won. We started hey. with one this week. We didn't want to jump around again? No, no, oh, no. That's All right, so uh, I think for, you know, providing a level of obviously of customer services is being able to handle surprises. You have every transaction I feel like going on in, in my personal business has always got some sort of surprise or two surprises or three surprises or something just that, you, you know, like, it's just, I, you know, we had one that's moving very, very nicely. And Friday night, we got an email from um, the buyer's agent stating, hey, something's going on with the buyer's, uh, you know, job situation. So here's an addendum. We're having to add dad onto the loan. I'm like, well, first of all, phone call would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a prequal from the for the dad would have been would have been nice, but this is now a surprise. Mm -hmm. And so curveballs are coming. It's important with your clients to not show the emotion. Mm -hmm. They tend to get emotional because it's a huge decision, it's a huge purchase or a huge sale that they are doing, and they tend to get emotional, but they rely on us and so uh you know i had to had to call my client and and this is the part of the thing we always say you know run to the fire not away from the fire uh it's friday night i've, I've got this i don't have answers i don't know exactly why this is happening because i didn't get the phone call uh, i didn't get the prequal i couldn't get a hold of the lender but i still had to give my client a call be very very cool about it and say hey this is this is not abnormal uh, we're going to get through this. These are the things that I need to do before I have you sign this addendum. But here is the situation. And you've always got to have this, I got this attitude. That is what they are looking for. And at the end of the day, when surprises come up, we talked about it last week, know who to rely on. It's it's always for me. The first call is always, it's always going on Facebook to these agent facebook groups to get advice no i don't uh, i was like it's, I was like, it's, it's, no no what no, are we no, doing no, right no. Now? <laughs> it's always pick up the phone yeah. and call my brokers i got five brokers at my disposal and there's not a week that goes by that i'm not picking up the phone or going down the hallway at least twice you know there's two sides to negotiating there's logic and there's emotion mm -hmm. And logic is the, I need this, and emotion is the, I want this. And so obviously when people, emotion is really what makes people sign the bottom line. Uh, if it meets all of the, the logical perspectives, then whichever house speaks to them, whatever one grabs the most emotion uh, is the one typically that they want to put the offer in on. But this also is in every single aspect of what takes place during that transaction. You have to remember, they're going to go through these, the same thing. They hire you because of what's between your mm -hmm. ears, not because of the MLS. They hire you because of what you know, your experiential training, your I've, I've got this because I've done this before. You know, it's kind of like the State Farm commercial. We know a thing or two. Is, no, what was that? That's not State Farm, is it? I don't know, whatever it was. We know a thing or two because we've done a thing too. You know, you know and, and that's really what this is all about. They, that if you wanted to go have a brain surgeon, are you going to hire the least expensive one? Or are you going to hire the one that has the highest probability of you being successful and come out and live the rest of your life? You know, so that's not always inexpensive. Sometimes that's multiple times more expensive. So we have to get off of the you know, discount everything perspective and realize our value proposition. And the value proposition comes from your experience. Well, I, I would give you a little pushback. I okay. think sometimes, and especially the situation, but a lot of times we are hired 
because we have access to the MLS, because we have a super key. That's where our customer service has to transition from. Doesn't matter why they hire me, it's why they keep me and why they refer me, because it sometimes has to move from just I am a super key to I provide great customer service. Well, that's good. Oh, no, sorry, I was just going to say that's the business minded agent. That's the one that's not just buying and selling homes for their clients. That's someone who's running a business. Getting hired is one thing, but cultivating lifelong relationships with those clients is another. And that's where this stuff comes into play. I mean, we talked about it last week. Be the duck on the pond. When these things are coming at you, you've got to be calm on the surface. And yeah, you can be paddling like mad under, but you've got to stay calm. Uh, and again, I mean, don't show emotion. I would say don't match emotion. Be the positive yeah. force in every conversation. Don't let anything rattle. You always be that steadfast hand and they will feel more comfortable talking to you down the line. Absolutely. All right. They are also coming to us uh, based on our ability to close. If you can't get the job done, it doesn't, it nothing matters. else matters. So uh, remember, coffee is for closers. Yep. Um, so Why'd you look at me when you said that? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Um, you're, <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome for the things I don't say. I appreciate it. Uh, your clients, obviously, they're either buying or selling or they might be leasing. But at the end of the day, whether they realize it or not, they are looking for someone who could get the job done. If you can't get the job done, it does not matter. It doesn't matter whether I walk into the restaurant and they greet me and they give me the most incredible level of service. I remember one time we went to a restaurant. Service was great. We sat down. Everything was going great. We ordered a couple steaks. Took a while. 30 minutes later, the waiter comes back and says, well, Unfortunately, that party and you know that large party over there took the last whatever steak it was. So we don't have that for you. I'm now 45, 50 minutes invested. At this point, it really doesn't matter anymore because I'm not getting no steak. Um, so they're looking for someone to get the job done. You have to be able to, and this is where customer service really plays a part in the beginning stages. You got to be able to articulate what you do, how you do it, and instill confidence in them about your abilities. Yeah, and I, I think that's really what, well, we've been saying all day today, really. Um, but it, it really boils down to your ability to close is your ability to help lead. And so if you can ask enough questions, you get the objection. If you can, uh, you know, again, ask enough questions, you can close the deal. So it's just one of those things that doesn't matter necessarily negotiation wise how much experience you've had the more experience you have certainly enough the better but you might have come from another job uh that that you had superior negotiation skills with so uh but we all come together and what is getting it done getting it done is really just having the ability to navigate people through the the entire process and when things do pop up uh having the ability to resolve them all right last one after the close this is why I always maintain this. This is where we leave all the money off the table. I, I think about this. You think about this for especially the buyer's perspective. Uh, when you meet a buyer and you take them through the process of showing them homes, negotiating, going through the inspection, going through the binzer, going through all the activities that lead up to the closing table to letting them know the, the loan has been funded and, and recorded and I'm going to meet you at the property and here are your keys. They, you, you are such a significant part of their life during this process. Now, all of a sudden, the next day and the next day and the next day, they never hear from you. It's, it's like this void. Um, so it's imperative that after you hand the keys, that's where the referrals are going to come from. That's where the repeat business is going to come from. So we tend to go dark on them after we close. Um, so schedule them into your CRM. Uh, we have on our CRM, we have an automated system that once we hand the keys to someone, boom, it automatically reminds us at certain different intervals, whether it's 15 days out, 30 days out, 60 days out, we get reminders of, of what to do. Uh, but you have to create your after the close system. Your goal after you hand the keys is to ensure that they never forget you. You know, Mike, when you started today, uh, you were talking about a, a hotel called Valley Ho over in Scottsdale. And uh, I just recently happened to have heard about somebody else who went there, uh, some friends that flew back into town, and they had an also excellent experience while they were there. But here's the thing. You had such an experience there 
that you were compelled to talk about it. Exactly. And so that is really what the objective is. So in essence, when you're done with your real estate service, when you're done providing customer service, you know, the, the, the fact is, is that what do you want your customer saying and how motivated do you want them to bring you up in a conversation like we're having today about Valley Ho? Um, and that's really what the objective is. The objective is to get them talking to their friends and family. But if you think that the reason why you don't want to stay in touch with those people after the close is because it's going to be six or seven years of sending them stuff before they come it's back crazy. into the real mm-hmm. world, shame on you. Because the reality is, is they may have a friend, a family, they may have people that are in similar financial circumstances that have the ability or interest to purchase, or Mike, maybe you can talk to them about building wealth. You know, Nick, I would contend that customer service never ends. I mean, in their mind, that your that level of customer service is, is a lifelong. So the question is, is after the close, what does your customer service look like? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects to it, but as we've discussed, real estate's a conversation that's happening every single day in every single household. You should be being brought up all the time. Your past clients should be referencing you every time they're having a conversation about real estate. That referral then gives you the ability to re-recruit your past client because you're keeping them a part of the conversation with whomever they've referred to you. You're thanking them, you're giving them a heads up, and they're a part of that transaction for the friend or the family member that they've referred. I've had three instances over the last weekend uh, that I've had conversations about real estate. And my new my new game, and it was this morning, uh, my daughter went into sixth grade, and so we walked her to the bus stop, and all the parents are there, and, and they're chatting. And I know a couple of the neighbors. Um, I'm not as walk around as you are, Mikey, um, but a couple of them <laughs> know I'm my age, there's not a lot of walking well, around. I'm, everybody going, knows I hurt, I hurt everywhere. So they said, you know, you're in real estate, right? How are things going? And I said, well, what is your realtor, realtor saying to you? And that question hit them like a ton of bricks wow. because the realtor's not wow. been reaching out. So if you wow. aren't reaching out to the people that you've been working with weekly, monthly, and just doing that touch point, you're not the person that's being talked about in the real estate conversation, which means you're leaving the money on the table. That's a mic drop. That is, that is, that should be in the Michael Mayer book. Yep. You should write Actually, a book. I think I might you should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, that's our uh, three pack. Anyway.